Captains. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, USS Endeavor. Woo! We got a good one for you today, and it involves a fan favorite of mine. Probably wasn't for most of you because of the original armor scheme of the Cheshire, which was... A very made it a very difficult play style um, when it first released however because of this update they buffed it and they put it on par with the AL Cheshire so we're gonna take a deep dive of what the ship actually looked like before the buff looked at it look at its armor scheme and we're gonna transition right into the brand new buff version or as I like to call the Cheshinator <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have two fantastic games to show you and a little bit of lessons to learn too from uh, one of the games. So let's take a look at the commander first. None other than Bruce Frazier at the helm, free to play commander. He's 16 3. Don't quite have him fully upgraded, but he's going to help with our overall speed. And with our inspirations, we've got Makawa and Mimbelli helping with our concealment and reload. And then everything else is pretty standard. Now on to the mod selections in the first slot, AA. You'll understand why. Second, we got Steering Gears Mod 2. And in the last one, we've got Concealment Mod. You only get three. On to the consumables, Damage Control Party, five second duration, get it back in just under a minute you do have sonar three charges at uh detecting ships up to 4.2 kilometers and you get some repair parties and because of fully packed we got three of them and they're not bad heels they're pretty decent on to the ship stats we're gonna go through this pretty quick Forty-two thousand five hundred hit points we will go over the armor because that is one of the biggest changes uh which makes this ship fantastic now and you'll ex you'll understand why uh, torpedo damage reduction is 19%. The Cheshire's main battery is six 234mm guns, which is a very unique caliber. Uh, it's, you got four of them in the front and two in the back. They reach out to just under 17 kilometers. Reload time is just sub 14 seconds. 3850 is the maximum HE shell damage. 24% chance to set fires. The AP shell damage is actually pretty saucy at 6,325, but that's if you get citadels. And this, the one thing that really annoyed a lot of people, including me, is that these AP shells would overpin targets a lot, especially cruisers. So that's the artillery. Onto the torpedoes, you have eight of them, four on either side. They do launch two by two because this is British. 8.8 .8 kilometer uh, torpedo range with this build, 61 knot speed, a little over 15,000 damage per torpedo hit, 96 second reload. They're they're kind of standard for the Brits, um, but they are mainly defensive in nature only. Uh, onto the AA defense, which is fantastic, and I would even argue as to say this is one of the best AA platforms, especially at tier six. And for a cruiser, this thing is just nasty. Any planes that come near you are going to get absolutely chewed out of the sky. Uh, they get, and, and and we haven't really put a whole lot of buffs into it except for the fir mo first mod slot. So AA is phenomenal. Your maneuverability, 36 knot top speed, 720 meter turning circle radius, 7.2 second uh, rudder shift, all kind of standard stuff. Uh, nothing really stand out. Nothing that really stands out here. Uh, you do get the built-in acceleration mod because this is this is British, which is why we uh, picked the turning circle in the second mod slot. Last year, concealment, 9.4 kilometers with this build. Very good. Very stealthy. Detectability range by air is 5.9 kilometers. And if you remember seeing the AA defense, they start going off at 6.2. So you can actually start knocking, knocking planes out before you're even spotted via air. Now let's take a look at what the Cheshire used to look like before the buff. This was what the Cheshire was for the longest time when it first released. Now what you're seeing here, that blue section on the nose, that was a very weak bow. You could not bow tank against anything except for cruisers if they shot AP. But now look at the glorious buff that we just got She's got a 25 millimeter nose, and that means we can bounce 14 inch shells, which you will go up against at this tier. 
stripping that away we've still got the same 30 millimeter deck and you also have the same 27 millimeter side plating so none of that has changed it's just that the bow got upgraded and you also got an upgrade to your superstructure it's even it's slightly more armored but it does allow battleships to pin you a little bit better and chunk you there uh, citadel is still the same it's a step citadel that sits slightly above the water so let's take a look at the first game where we look at the Cheshire before she got the buff. Okay, Captains, game number one is on the map Neighbors, and it is a capture the base mode. And everybody knows how much I love capture the base mode. And for those of you who don't know, I hate it. But we are going to try and make the most of this game. Now remember, this is pre-buff Cheshire. This is with the really weak bow. So keep that in mind. And uh, right off the bat here, we do have a North Carolina that's with us over on this side. And we also have another cruiser, which I forget at the moment of, of this video of who is out here helping me. I believe it's a Dallas. So he's got some really fast firing HE shells, at least a lot faster firing guns than I do. But he's going to be helping me out here on the flank. Um, I wasn't quite sure if this North Carolina was going to push past me. And I think we both had the same idea. I was going to let him go. And then he slowed down to let me go. And then we both accelerated at the same time and ran into each other. So just thankful I wasn't spotted in that moment because I wouldn't have been able to have done anything. Now, right here, whenever ships are spotted, especially in the Cheshire and with me being broadside like I am, I don't want to open up my guns right off the bat because that just means I'll get focused. So I'm kind of waiting to position myself in a place where I can do it from relative safety. So that's why I'm kind of holding my shots right here and not opening up. Now, there, there's only one destroyer on the red team, and we actually have two. And the reason why is because one of our destroyers... I believe is in a fail division. So Wargaming in its matchmaking allowed us to have an extra destroyer, although it is a tier four destroyer in a tier five, six lobby. Now, um, and that's another thing I failed to mention. We are top tier. Uh, so a couple of things that, um, and we'll go over this in the second video, but the guns got buffed with its accuracy. The bow got buffed by increasing that, that like we saw when we looked at the armor scheme from um i believe it was 19 millimeters or 16 millimeters all the way up to 25 millimeters and so the guns got a little bit more accurate and the reload got cut by a second and a half um so all of those are really really good things however in this video we don't get the benefit of those buffs so that's why our reload is a little bit longer. Our accuracy is not quite as tight and our bow is very weak and, get, get, and can get punched through by battleships, which is what made this ship really hard to play because you kind of had to get into positions where you couldn't expose your bow. If you tried to bow tank battleships, they would punch right through and citadel the bejesus out of you. You did have a decent um, belt armor, but unfortunately they could exploit that if you didn't angle appropriately. So it was just a really tricky ship to play. Um, here in the game, I, <laughs> I got to be honest, that Scane got, he really annoyed the crap out of me. He was getting good torpedo hits on me. And I know I, I didn't pop my hydro. Um, so that's on me. So that's, that's my fault for why I've, I'm flooding. Uh, I'm not the most agile uh, when it comes to this ship. So it's hard for me to dodge torpedoes and the... Scane just has really fast torpedoes. They're not the fastest, and they don't do the most damage, but they are annoying. So here in the early going, I, I make a mistake in that I, I didn't use my hydro when I felt like I should have, and of course the only the only destroyer on the red team uh, was on my, our side. But we've got the Dallas that's behind me, who's really chunking them good. And now I finally popped it, so just in case he decides to try and shoot any more at me, we are going to be able to dodge them, hopefully, this time. And there we finally uh, get the coup de gras and get our revenge for all those torpedo strikes that we took. And uh, fortunately, we're able to see these coming a little bit better, and we dodge them effectively, which I should have done in the beginning. So that's on me. Uh, not going to not gonna complain for torpedo hits when I don't even utilize the tools at my disposal to to dodge them appropriately 
so both destroyers are well, their destroyers down. We've also lost uh, one of our destroyers, and we only have one left on our team. Now, we're way out here on the left flank. One, because the destroyer was out here, and uh, but I think it was worth it for getting rid of him when we did. Um, but now that we've lost our last destroyer, both teams are effectively destroyerless, and we have no real way of getting good spots other than potentially doing it ourselves. Now, we have decent concealment. Um, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, 9.4 kilometers is actually a pretty good concealment mark. Now, here in this engagement, the Strasburg was out here. He's actually, he's been whacked pretty good. Um, and the fire chance, again, on these shells is actually pretty, pretty good. But the Strasburg can punch through my bow. And staying bow in is, it's not the best strategy the only thing at this the only thing that's helping me is that I'm at range and the Strasburg is not exactly known for being the most accurate when it comes to its shells. So by maintaining a narrower profile, I'm just trying to negate his accuracy and I am rolling the dice a little bit in that. So onto the game itself and um, I also want to talk about a mistake that I do make in this game. I'll point it out when it happens. It's one that I had to look back on the video and kind of look at it and go, what could I have done better? And is it possible that this game could have ended more in favor for our team if I would have done just one thing? And looking back on it and doing the math on it, I did realize that I could have won, but it was really hard to understand while the game was going because it was a lot of mental math that, anyway, I'll, I'll explain it uh, because, you know, hindsight being what it is, uh, you always know after the fact what you should have done, uh, but mistakes were made on my part, and I'll be the first to admit that it was a mistake, not one that I really foresaw in the meantime, but uh, we'll go over that when it actually happens. So, my thinking at this point in the game, because of where we're at, it's me and this Dallas that's out here, and we're trying to burn down this Strasbourg, who is definitely almost dead. He has been on fire a couple times, and he's about to go out any second here, and I'm trying to angle a little bit in case he decides to get one more salvo off, but he doesn't, and we're actually able to get an arsonist medal. So looking at the ship count, we are down by one ship, are no destroyers to have to deal with, but now really the best play for us is to go towards the cap, which I almost never get an opportunity to do in a cruiser when it's this close as we lose yet again another ship. So now it's even more imperative that we get in there. Uh, and that's when we notice that the Exeter Bravo edition is out here, but his guns are facing towards our cap along with this New Mexico. No, we have largely been forgotten out here, and that's what makes this push even more important. And yes, we are kind of making ourselves known at this point by moving towards the cap and shooting at these guys. Their map awareness alarm should be going off left and right. But for some reason... They're not really coming for us. And uh, that's when we notice the Leglisian air out here that is very low, which is a welcoming sight. Uh, the New Mexico is also really low. So I'm actually kind of feeling pretty good that we can even up the ship count as long as our other two ships that are closer to our cap stay alive. But they do have a lot of uh, focused fire uh, from other ships that we can't see. They're off. Uh, there we're able to clean up the Leglisian air. And then we turn our guns on the New Mexico. And because of our reload and how slow it is, we're not exactly able to uh, to finish this guy off fast enough in order to get a double strike, but we do take them both out. And that puts us at four kills. Yeah, 58,000 damage, and it, I guess you could say these are, these are cleanup kills uh, for the most part. But getting a Kraken... In the Cheshire pre-buff, I considered one of the greatest achievements in this game because of how difficult it is 
to do it. And we are just one ship away with four more targets left. And I know this Exeter B is right here. He's in the smoke screen, and now we're, we're making our way into the cap. And I'm going to try and talk about all of this while the battle's going on. We switched to the AP because he is relatively flat broadside to us, but we get four overpins and one pin, which, again, is kind of a constant theme with this ship because of its caliber size. It they have to almost be really steeply angled in order for us to get really good damage. Like, there we got four pens. All six shells hit, and we get four pens. The accuracy on that shot was really good, and he was steeply angled, which goes to show whenever you're flat broadside, you're not going to get as good a damage. And here, we, I thought we got the kill. We had the fire going, and then the Dallas <laughs> yanks the kill, and we miss out on the Kraken. And I kind of go, thanks. Um, now, I know I've boasted in the past that kill stealing I don't care about. But in this particular instance, I cared a little bit. I really wanted that Kraken. Um, I have gotten a Kraken in the Cheshire before. Only one other time. I didn't have the video recorded. But it is under my standard battles. Uh, showing that I got it. It was a long time ago. Um, but if you saw in the thumbnail... Uh, we do get a Kraken. It's just not in this game. It's in the second game. Um, the buffed version of the of the Cheshire. Uh, we get a Kraken, and uh, we do really well in that game. But I'll save that conversation for the next match. Uh, we're still in this one, and here is where I want to show where we make the mistake. So we're in the cap. We're not spotted. And if you look at the capture base, we're just under a minute from capturing the base, securing the win. However, the Dallas starts opening up on the Hayuga. Now, I don't know if he did that because he was already spotted. But this, because we're both in the capture circle, we are both sharing capture points. Whenever you shoot at a ship and get defend ribbons on that ship, you do reset the cap for that one player. The other player that's in the cap still is holding on to those capture points. So right there, the cap gets reset. So now we went from 27 seconds to a minute and 25. And here's where I made my mistake. I shot my guns. And the reason why I say that's a mistake is because once I realized the Dallas had shot, I figured, up, oh, we've lost. There's no way to win this game. However, looking back on this and re-watching it and breaking it down, I realized that if I would have just stayed dark and stayed in the cap, and because of my low concealment, I think I could have done this, even though I stay on the edge, the Dallas is going to stay alive long enough for enough time to have ticked for me to have secured the cap as long as the Dallas did, doesn't run out and stays alive. And looking back on it, that time would have transpired because the Dallas does stay alive long enough. Now, I think one of the reasons why the Dallas stays alive long enough is because, as you can see, we're getting focused uh, because we shot and now we're an available target. So there is a possibility that the Dallas could have died sooner than he did because he would have been the only thing for these ships to shoot at. But I still consider that a little bit of, mis of a mistake. And here I even go off the cap because at this point... We're going to get lit up the entire time. There's no way for us to capture it. And even though we're really close in score, we're just not going to be able to make up the time. We kind of have to take out these ships. And there, the Dallas goes down, which is now going to put the onus on me in a 1v3 scenario. And if there's one thing that you know about the Cheshire, especially the pre-buff Cheshire... Uh, it's not a good ship that can carry matches, especially with me being down to less, uh, practically 4,000 health. Yes, the Hayuga is burning pretty good, but he can punch through my stern and bow, so I have to angle at him. The, Chipa the, the Shores that's out there, not the Chapaya, the Shores is peppering me at range, and he has really good velocity, so even at range, he can hit me pretty consistently. Um, I am just not able to 
I'm, I'm just not able to do anything. I go dark here because I'm trying to get turned around, but there's less than a minute left. And so I'm going to put this as my fault. I think I could have won the game if we would have, if I would have just stayed in the cap and not shot my guns and stayed disciplined. But it was hard for me to know that in the heat of battle. And that would have required a lot of mental math on the spot, which I got to be honest, I wouldn't have done very well. I was more interested in angling and staying not spotted. But looking back on it and doing the math, mathematically, it was possible for me to win this match. However, unlikely. So that's going to do it. We end up getting focused way too much because there's just not enough time. And we end up taking the L. And we miss out on the Kraken, which... Ugh, I gotta be honest, that frustrated me more, a little bit more than the loss. But we do come top on the leaderboard. So that's a look at the Cheshire before the buff. Now we're gonna look at the Cheshire. Sorry, folks, that's a bad impersonation of Arnold Schwarzenegger. But on to the game, second game. We're on the map Trap. It is a tier five, tier six lobby. So we do have the benefit of being top tier. And if you notice, there are planes involved because we got a carrier on either side, which when I see that in the Cheshire, I kind of rub my hands together and go, oh, goody. Now, I promised to show you the buff stats, and this is what was on the patch notes. Uh, again, the main battery shell grouping was increased by 10% from 1.8 to 2.0 Sigma, which means it just gets better grouping. It's it's more accurate. Main battery reload time was improved from 16 to 14 and a half seconds base, which you can reduce that further with uh, with builds. And the improved armor of the various ship parts, specifically the bound stern to 25 millimeters and the superstructure armor to 16 millimeters. All of this is fantastic. And this game is going to reflect that. Whereas before we could not bow tank 14 inch shells, now we can. So ships like the New Mexico, the California, the Dunkirk, um, the Fuso, the Hayuga, all of these ships that are at Tier 5, um, we can effectively bow tank. The only ones that we can't bow tank are like the North Carolina that has 16-inch shells. Um, and there's a couple of other ships that have 16 at this. The West Virginia is one. So those are the only ships, but those aren't in this battle. In fact, the only battleship that is in this game that can overmatch my um, my bow is the Nizanel. And it has really bad accuracy. And uh, so that's the only ship that can, at this point, punch through my bow. Now, here on the game, I get really aggressive at the start. One, because there's only one destroyer on each side. And because of that, um, I'm not good at taking out destroyers. In this, in this ship, I, I'll be honest, I'm just not. However, with only one of them in the game, and it looks like he's over on Alpha because of the smoke screen and the cap being captured at this point, I'm relatively safe coming in here. The planes don't come over here initially, so I'm able to kind of get into this cap and try and get into a really good sneaky position right off the get-go where I could potentially take Bravo and start getting these broadside shots from across the map. And with my improved accuracy and reload, I'm going to be able to get more shells on target. And these shells do hurt when you can get them, especially with broadsides uh, against battleships. This Dunkirk is going to find out too just how nasty these AP shells are, even from range. So we finally are able to get Bravo Cap, which is fantastic. The Atlanta is also out there. We're going to take a shot at him right here. And I'm ever so mindful of this Fuso that is pushing into the cap, which I don't like. Uh, there we actually get a Citadel against that Atlanta. So this thing can Citadel lightly armored targets, but at range it holds a little bit better penetration. It's up close that this thing really suffers with getting Citadels against uh, broadside cruisers. They got to be per they got to be fairly steeply angled, but at a certain point, that steep angle can actually bounce these shells. So it's it's a fine line that you walk with this. Uh, broadside targets at range are a little bit better, and now that the accuracy is better, it's it's really nice. So looking at the map, Alpha is really hotly contested, but because of all of these ships out here, we're able to really get 
free shots. And when you position like this, you get rewarded because a lot of the ships at Alpha that spawned over there are not going to have the benefit that we do because they're trying to bow tank them as the carrier is also over there. So we're going to take shots at him too. Thankfully, Charlie hasn't been captured by the Reds, but our blue team hasn't done a really good job of capturing it either. We've only There's only been one ship that's been sunk thus far in the game, and unfortunately it was ours that we lost. So because of all this, we are technically down in score because we're not generating any points from the cap that I got in Bravo because the Fuso's in there. Alpha is generating points because the Reds took it rather convincingly. So they are getting points ticked up, plus the ship loss is also the reason why the score is pretty heavily in the favor of the blue team. And there we even lose another ship, which makes it the gap widen even more. However, this Dunkirk again being broadside to us and this Fuso coming around the corner. Normally, I would be freaking out because the Fuso would be able to punch right through my bow and I would be absolutely screwed. But because of the new improved armor plating, we're able to bounce stuff, which makes me a heck of a lot more confident and allows me to not be really afraid. The only thing that I need to fear is HE shells in the event that he has them, but he's not really shooting us with those right now. So we're, that's the reason why we have taken very minimal damage, if any. Uh, we are doing rather rather well in this position we throw the torpedo single fire out there and the fuso does start to turn out a little bit we miss out on the kill on the uh, dunkirk out there but he is now done we do get one torpedo hit unfortunately no flood comes from it but he is pretty broadside to us and as you can see we can chunk him because of that now the shores out here is going to start making making our life a little miserable and because of that, I am going to stay angled to this Fuso, but I'm going to turn my guns over to the Shores. I'm just hoping that he gets spotted. Right now he's not, but because our, our friendly Duca is coming out there towards Charlie, I'm hoping that he's going to spot the Shores, which is going to allow me to start peppering him. And thankfully that does happen. But he does go out there broadside to the sh – uh, not broadside, but he does go out there to expose himself to the shores. And uh, because of that, I believe the shores is going to start changing his focus to the Duca, which is something that I kind of want right now. Um, we are trying to angle as best as we can, and we are getting some pretty chunky hits. These shells are a lot more accurate. So because of the hairy situation with the Fuso, and now the Destroyer is in the cap – I need to start, um, well, I can't play around anymore. I'm going to have to start moving in to take out this Fuso. I am shooting single fire torps rather slowly to try to slow down that destroyer so I can get up to speed and take out this Fuso. So again, because of the improved 25 millimeter nose, I can stay angled like this and I'm not scared. And look at that. All bounces. We got a little bit right there, but much less damage that I took that I wouldn't it wouldn't have been the case until the buff. And that's something that you can now do in this ship, and it's something that battleship players need to be aware of. There we wipe out the Fuso with our torpedoes, and now the Monahan is coming around the corner. I don't know if he has his torpedoes back or not. But I got to anticipate that he does, which is why my Hydro is running. Like, like I said, the, the Cheshire is not a destroyer hunter, unfortunately. It's just not very well equipped because its guns don't reload very fast. Even with the buff, I would say it's still not a great destroyer hunter. And he does shoot those torpedoes at me, which prevents me from turning out to get my guns on target. So I have to turn out in order to avoid that salvo. Uh, thankfully, I'm able to dodge it rather easily, but he is unfortunately going to get away around that corner. Um, so good move on his part, whether he meant to do it or not. Uh, he was able to reduce my firepower down to only one third. Uh, the Shores now is at range, and he is a massive threat. If you look at the score and the ship count, it ain't looking too good, folks. 
Uh, it's actually looking really bad, but uh, but just hold on. Don't let's not get too uh, discouraged here. Um, we're going to start making some pretty good waves here, and even though we are almost dead, this shore is, is almost deader, uh, if that's ever a word. So we're going to take one final shot and uh, follow it up with these front turrets to see if we can't wipe him off the board, but we don't need our, our front turrets. We take him out, and we get a kill. We're up to two kills. A hell of a ton of ribbons, which I can't even fathom right now and the california is low and i gotta be honest i was like ah he's dead but he's still alive so okay we'll take a shot uh wasn't really expecting those to connect and kill him but <laughs> okay uh a bit of a junky kill but uh i don't care we need to get these ships turned over in our favor because of score and every ship dead is points back on the board for us so that's my thinking process the monahan is shooting at us in open water so we're going to start taking shots at him. Now, I'll be honest, I kind of misjudge my shell velocity towards this guy and when what looks like they're really good on target, I'm not quite leading him enough. As you can see, they're kind of hitting towards the rear of his ship. So I should have led those targets a little bit better. So I think that's less of the uh, RNG and more on my aim. So that's that's kind of on me. But I'm hoping that these guys will take out that ship as we do a good dodge of those torpedoes from the carrier. And now, because we're so close to the carrier, we're going to be able to rack up a whole bunch of plane kills. Because the AA platform on this thing is the spicy. So, because the Ranger is angled towards us, our AP shells are going to have more armor to pass through to arm better. So, these shells are actually going to start working rather well. As, uh, But right there, we you know show that overpins are still a thing. Um, but we get our clear sky medal right there. We did get a Confederate medal earlier. And look at the accuracy on that. Ugh, that is nasty. And from that, we get our high caliber. So we get the high caliber, the Confederate, the clear sky. The only thing we're missing is a Kraken at this point. And we're three kills. We need two more. This Ranger is definitely going to be our fourth. Boom, there he goes, which reduces the ship count. And oh my gosh, the Monahan's down to nothing. So I'm like, oh, can we do it right here? Can we get the Kraken? He's at range. That's a that's not an easy shot. But the uh, carrier does a good job of taking him, taking him out, and I got to be honest. At this point, I wasn't, I, I wasn't thinking Kraken as much as I was the win. Although Krakens are always on my mind in this ship, I always consider it a very good achievement if you can get a Kraken in the Cheshire. It is easier to do now that the armor's been upgraded. If you were able to get a Kraken in the pre-buff version of the Cheshire, my cap is off to you, Captain, because that is a hard feat to accomplish. But now we are we have taken Bravo cap, and we did that as a solo. Now we're in Alpha cap, and because no other ships are in here, and in fact, we're the only one left, unfortunately, the last two ships are the Gneisenau earlier, which we talked about is the only ship that can punch through our bow. So that's not a good thing that I like to see late in this game, especially when I have no heals and I'm down to a little over 5,000 health. But the Nuremberg is something that I can take take on rather well as we secure the cap. And I'm looking at the score, and unfortunately it is wildly still in the Reds' favor. And those two guys are in a division. Now I'm not spotting the Niza now. The planes are doing that for me from our friendly uh, carrier, I believe. So that's why the, the Niza now keeps popping up. And because we're just outside of its spotting range, I think we've cleared the island. Although right there, he does spot us. But because we're moving towards the island, his shots are actually going to hit the island and not do any damage to us. So that's a, that's, that's a huge benefit. As we take these shots, the only thing that they need to do is basically stay alive and they win. But they're pushing into me, so that's why I'm going to shoot these torpedoes. Because I have a feeling he's going to turn in. And the last known position of that Konigsberg was heading towards the left opening of this where my bow is facing. So that's where I'm heading. 
I want to try and delay and stave off this battleship, the Nizenau, as much as I possibly can. And my thought process is if I can take out the Nuremberg, then I have a shot. So I pop my Hydro. He has better Hydro as far as range than we do. But I'm doing it mainly so that I can spot any incoming torpedoes. And so at this point, I'm like, Ugh, I've, I've got to be able to take this guy out. Now, if he's shooting HE at me, then he could take us out, which is not ideal. I only have torpedoes on this side of my ship, so I'm going to go ahead and start launching them. Unfortunately, the one that I shoot, the second one, hits the island, which is not something that I want to see. But I do have some torpedoes out there. His Hydra was running, so he should have seen these coming, but he doesn't make any effort to dodge. We take him out. We get the Kraken unleashed, but he's able to get his torpedoes off. And at this point, I'm going, oh, no, I'm not turning the right way. And unfortunately, this is going to connect and it's going to kill me, which also ruins the clutch win. We actually had the points lead after I got that kill. Oh, what a heartbreaking defeat. And I feel like I let the team down, even though I had an amazing match in the Cheshire. I mean, I did the math on this. If I would have won, I would have eclipsed 3,800 base XP. But wasn't meant to be. What a heartbreaking loss. And it's one of the few videos that I've made where both of the games that I feature are both losses so just goes to show that I still make mistakes can't win them all had a great game and did get the Kraken and I do believe the Cheshire is now a very viable ship at tier 6 so if you're in the market for a fun AA platform that has a decent bow now and really decent well, I feel like they're much more, they're much better guns than they were before, then try it out. And if you already have the Cheshire and you haven't taken it out after this buff, you got to give it a fair shake because I personally believe it's in its best form yet. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, Captains. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to you bringing you a little bit more content as we get going. But until next time, this is the USS Endeavor. Signing off.